Hallelujah. Lord God, we receive your word today. Open our hearts, open our minds. God, write your word upon our hearts. Lord God, that we will have it forever sealed in our hearts and in our minds, ready to serve you and to love you and to know you, God. We love you today, Lord, and remember all of your benefit, God, all of the sacrifice, Lord, and we attend to worship today. We worship you and magnify and glorify your holy name, for there is none greater than you, Lord. There is none greater. We pray that all men would know you, that all people would know you today, Lord. God, that we can be a conduit of your love and your mercy, Lord God, of your truth, that we can be you on this earth to others, Lord. Help us to open those doors and to walk through and to be effectual in the lives of all people. Lord, we love you and we thank you today. We thank you today for your goodness and your grace unto us, O Lord. For great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave a may sing grace thank you for this love lord thank you for the nail pierced hands wash me in your cleansing flood now all i know your forgiveness and embrace Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. We crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. High head lifted up. Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Thank you for the cross, of Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all the sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for the narrow pierced hands wash me in your cleansing flow now all i know is forgiveness and embrace worthy is the lamb seated on the throne we crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. You are high and lifted up. Oh, Jesus, Son of God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb, oh, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy are you, Lord. 
there are not enough words to express how worthy you are. There's not enough words for us to express praise to you, to lift you up. Lord, we acknowledge who you are and we humbly bow ourselves before you in contrition, in repentance, that we come into your presence, O oh Lord, that we enter your gates with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving in our heart, with hope in our heart. We enter your courts with praise. Lord, we come in to that throne room we come in knowing that you are our God and that you are here for us and we are able to worship you. Be lifted up, Lord. Be lifted up that your throne would be forever, O oh God, and that we would know that in our hearts. Lord, we bless your name and we magnify your good works O oh god for great is your faithfulness O oh god my father thank you lord today we talk about the passover today being the day before his death the day being the day before we look to the cross. This day, the sacrificial lamb. The festival of unleavened bread, which is also called Passover, was approaching. The leading priests and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. Then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples, and he went to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted, and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him when the crowds went around. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so we can eat it together. They asked, Where do you want us to prepare it? He replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him at the house he enters. Say to the owner, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering began. You think about the disciples and those that were raised in the Israeli faith and the, the books of the law, and they understood what the Passover meant in reference to them being able to be freed from slavery and the sacrifices that they would make. But by this time, so many years had passed that all of these people and people before them had grown up learning of this, but they had never experienced it. They had never lived that slavery. In this time, it was like an old story. Although they would follow tradition and they would do as they were told and they would celebrate the feasts, they would celebrate the Passover. The true understanding of the sacrifice that was made and the slavery that had happened was not real to them because the experience was on black and white and carried on from one person to the other. 
So this Passover meal that they prepared seemed very traditional to them. Maybe it was so done so much every year of their life that they just knew it like the back of their hand. But this one was going to be different. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Wow. What do the disciples think about that? He took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which given for you is given for you do this in remembrance of me this takes it to a whole new level who is this jesus my body broken for you compared to this bread after the supper taking the cup of wine he said this cup is the new covenant between god and his people an agreement confirmed with my blood which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But there, here at this table, sitting among us, as a friend is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die, but what sorrow awaits the one who betrays me? The disciples began to ask each of each other, which of them would ever do such a thing. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them in this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial. And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Wow, what a statement. Just as my father has granted me a kingdom. Now these words that Jesus is giving is a promise. This is a promise to all that believe in him. I now grant you the right. That is a legal terminology. I grant you the right. Receive that. That is sealed. If you receive that and believe it, he has granted us the right to eat and drink at his table in his kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you, but and even to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will have already denied me three times that you even knew me. You'll you'll deny you even knew me. Jesus asked them, when I sent you out to preach the good news and you did not have money, a traveler's bag or an extra pair of sandals, did you need anything? No, they replied. But now, he said, take your money and traveler's bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, they replied, we have two swords among us. That is enough, he said. And we know that the sword of the Spirit is our weapon. 
through the Gospel of Luke, we've mentioned the last six or uh, the last final weeks of Jesus' life. We've gone through it these past few days and we're coming up to the end of the week. It's been a week on a lot of this that I just squeezed it in for us to be able to join together and share with each other. This final week of Jesus' life, um, just the outline of chapter 19 and the records of how Jesus came into Jerusalem and on Palm Sunday, how he was worshipped, this feast of the Passover. And this reading that we have read, like I said, the, the Jewish people have been at this point so familiar with that, but they didn't realize what was about to take place, that Jesus would become that true sacrificial lamb, that body and that blood that would be shed for all of us. And as we believe him and are able to take on everything that he has left for us, what a blessing that he has given us. Jesus shared that last Passover meal with his disciples and he would be hanging on a cross in less than 24 hours after this. The last Passover meal that Jesus shares is more commonly known as our culture as the Last Supper. We even see that painting Leo uh, Leonardo da Vinci captured. And I mean, we see it everywhere. This beautiful painting, people have it in their homes. It was completed in 1498 and it measures 15 feet wide by 29 feet long. And it hangs in Milan, in a convent in Milan. Italy, but it's not the way he portrayed it that brings the beauty of that art to our hearts, art of what Jesus did in that sacrifice and how he portrayed that meal before the disciples and those words that he gave. Those being the last words of promise before he went through the death, burial, and resurrection. There will be a few more promises after the resurrection, but this being such a crucial day before he would be taken and put on that cross. When you look at Jesus at that center of the table, when we kind of see that picture that we've all seen, to his right is John the apostle, but he looks you know, like he's, so enamored by Christ. He had great love for Christ. And Mary Magdalene was there. She was helping. There was, there was all of the disciples lined up, Judas being in the mix and him calling him out. That's that portrayal of it. But knowing that this last supper would be a remembrance that they would keep for, for all of their, when they leave this and they go past the resurrection and they become um, preachers, apostles of the gospel throughout all of the places that they will go, this last supper will be in their remembrance. And they will know that every time they partake of this, that that will be the last supper that they're remembering. It will never go from their minds. And any of you that have taken communion, or if you take communion, um, you can do that in your own home in remembrance of the Lord. If you don't have a church that you go to, or you may be on a service on television and they're taking communion, take it with them. You can get a piece of cracker and some juice or something. But the point of it is, is that we acknowledge that we are partaking of that body and of that blood that Jesus gave for all of us, that he shed on the cross, that he poured out for us, how he was broken and how he purchased our salvation with that body and blood. And we just thank you, Lord. We remember you. We do this in remembrance of you today, joining together and agreeing with the covenant that you have made 
this salvation covenant we receive. Tomorrow's going to be hard as we go into that sacrifice and we share the death, burial, and resurrection together. But what rejoicing knowing the sacrifice that you made for us and what we have to look forward to in the spirit of God that is able to give us life and life more abundantly. We pray that for every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people, salvation, Lord, stir up the hearts of your people that we would be ministers of your word. Oh God, I pray with all of my heart, hear our cry for all the lost souls, for all the people that need to know you. Bring salvation through us, God, to each one, every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation. Salvation in Jesus' name, repentance and baptism and being filled with your spirit. Lord, that we would be stirred up to shine your light all places, Lord. That we would pray with fervency for the lost. That we would intercede. You will hear us, Lord. You will attend to our prayer. It is your word. And we trust you for that today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.